In late August this past offseason, the Blazers finally made a bit of a splash move. They went out and traded for Larry Nance Jr. from the Cleveland Cavaliers. That was a guy that I had wanted for the entirety of the offseason. He was a guy that I had talked about a couple years ago as a potential target, and he's a guy that makes a ton of sense for this team. The Blazers ended up shipping off Derek Jones Jr. and their 2022 lottery-protected first-round pick in order to make this move happen. Larry Nance Jr. slots immediately in as the Blazers' sixth man, so to say. He will be their backup four, and I think he'll be the guy that makes the entire bench unit work. I'll get into exactly why I think that'll be the case, and how he fits next to other players that'll be coming off our bench. But before we hop into things, you can save $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase with the promo code UPRISE. I shortened our promo code from Blazers Uprise to UPRISE, so now it's even simpler. Right now, there's phenomenal opening night deals against the Sacramento Kings. I was actually surprised as to how cheap a lot of the tickets are. You can get 100 level tickets for around $70 a piece. There are some additional fees and whatnot, but if you've never bought tickets on SeatGeek before and you use the promo code UPRISE when you check out, you can save 20 bucks. So I think that's a phenomenal opening night deal. The ticket prices are in a really good spot for fans as we head into the season, surprisingly. So if you want tickets to opening night or any future Blazer game, definitely check out SeatGeek.com and use our promo code UPRISE. Last season for the Cavs, Larry Nance Jr. averaged 31 minutes per game. He played 35 games and started 27 of them. He did miss about half the season with a fractured hand, but in the 35 games and 31 minutes per game he did play, he averaged 9.3 points per game, 6.7 rebounds, and 3.3 one assists. He shot 47% from the field, which includes 55% from two and 36% from three. He did struggle from the free throw line, only shot 61% from there. That's a career low. That's something that'll need to improve. And lastly, he averaged 1.7 steals per game. For a forward, that is a phenomenal number, and we'll get into his off-ball defense. But first, let's jump into the offensive side of his game. I think the most important development for him being a role player is how he's improved his three-point shot. After struggling from three and not shooting many his first three years in the NBA, the last three years he's been improving his three-point percentage by about 1% a year. In 2018-2019, he shot 34%. The following year, shot 35%. And then last season, shot 36% from three. This has been a big development for him because he's a guy that you're not just going to give the ball to and he's not going to go out there and give you 20. He's not a guy that's going to run the entire offense. He's a guy that is going to be playing off ball a lot and playing off of other guys. He's a glue guy. So being able to knock down the three point shot has been crucial for him developing into a role that fits him. And now he's able to just be a better role player and be a better floor spacer for main guys such as a Damian Lillard or a CJ McCollum. He is now a guy that you can't just leave open. So if he's left open, he better be shooting threes. He's a good enough three point shooter at this point. Hopefully he can continue to marginally improve. But the standout area of his game on offense doesn't have anything to do with his scoring. It has to do with his passing ability. As I said, he averaged over three assists per game last year. Per 36 minutes, he averaged 3.5 assists per game. And a lot of people love to talk about him as a short role playmaker, but I don't just want to put his passing in a box because I think he can pass in pretty much any situation. I think he reads the game well. He sees the floor well. He can pass out of the post. He can pass from the top of the arc. He can pass from the high post he can lead a transition break and make the right passes there there was really no situation that I've seen where he can't pass the ball he just has a feel for the game can read the game and he's not just a short role playmaker however his short role playmaking is very intriguing teams have had a lot of success with trapping Damian Lillard in playoffs past now the Blazers have a guy in Larry Nance Jr. who can be a screen setter and a playmaker out of the short role you combine that with Cody Zeller's passing ability and Yusuf Nurk his passing ability and the Blazers have three big men at the four and five spots that can really pass the ball. He can also handle the ball a bit. I think he can be a bit of a secondary ball handler and a playmaker and that will help take some of that pressure off an Anthony Simons if he's running the bench unit. Nance is also a really 
good lob target. He is a threat in transition, especially filling lanes and catching lobs. He can also catch lobs off the pick and roll. The Blazers haven't thrown many lobs in years past. Hopefully Damian Lillard worked on that this past offseason, but I don't think Dame is as bad at throwing lobs as some people act like he is. And even if it's not a great lob pass, Larry Nance Jr. has the athletic ability to go up and still finish the play. We saw him in the dunk contest a couple years back. He's definitely an athlete and he has decent overall court speed for a four man he can run the floor as a lane filler as I said it doesn't even have to be throwing him lobs you can pass to him around the three-point line and then he's the type of guy who reads the game well enough to make the right pass afterwards or go and finish himself but really he's just a phenomenal player to get in and help us play at a faster tempo in my opinion because he doesn't just have to be a lane filler in transition he's a guy that can grab and go and push the pace and handle the ball and be the ball handler pushing it in transition he also sparks a lot of transition opportunities with how many deflections and steals he gets so he's the perfect guy to bring in at the backup four spot in order to help our bench unit play a faster pace and given who we have on that bench unit I think our bench unit will function better playing a fast-paced offense. Nance is also a putback threat for his career he averages three offensive rebounds per 36 minutes so he's a good rebounding four man his rebounding declined a little bit last year but he's had many seasons where he averaged over 10 rebounds per 36 minutes for a smaller team having a four man that can rebound like that is definitely crucial and it makes it possible to play Rocco at the four and Larry Nance Jr. at the five considering Larry Nance Jr. can help control the boards and that is a Robert Covington's strong suit as far as Larry Nance Jr. as a slasher he doesn't drive the lane much but that doesn't mean he doesn't have the ability I think he might have more chances in the Portland offense to be able to drive the lane Portland has uh, a ton of really good three-point shooters so they should have pretty good floor spacing. Mary Nance Jr. is just a guy who uh, is very unselfish and will make the right pass, will make the right play, will shoot the three ball if it's there. He's not a guy that's really trying to do a ton off the dribble but uh, I have seen flashes of that and I haven't watched him enough to really know how often he does it. That'll be something that I'm looking forward to seeing as the season gets underway. But he does have some slashing ability because he's athletic and can finish a bit and can make the right pass if somebody helps onto him. We'll just have to wait and see on how frequently he drives the lane. Now, as far as his defense, his defense is absolutely phenomenal he is maybe the best off ball defender at the power forward spot in the league if not he's definitely top three top four before his injury last season he was actually leading the league in deflections for his career averages two steals per 36 minutes he is phenomenal advanced metrics great amount as like a top two percent off-ball defender. He plays the passing lanes really well. His help side positioning is almost perfect. He's a very, very smart defensive player, and I'm very excited to have him playing defense, maybe next to a Robert Covington as well, because if you have both those guys in the game, you have two of the best off-ball defensive forwards in the entire league. However, he's not just an off-ball defender. I think he's a little bit better of an on-ball defender than Robert Covington is, even though I think Rocco is underrated in that regard. Larry Nance Jr. has the ability to guard one through five, and he might get eaten up a bit by some of the best guards in the league if he switched out onto him, but he can be competitive, and against some of the lesser starting guards in the league, he can actually consistently stay in front of them. His ability to guard five positions gives him a ton of switchability. If you have lineups with Norm, him, and Rocco in the game. You can switch pretty much amongst all of them unless you're switching Norman Powell onto a big man. And given that Carmelo Anthony was the Blazers' backup power forward last season, Larry Nance Jr. is a huge defensive upgrade over him. Now, the only area in which his defensive game isn't great per se is his rim protection. I think he's a solid rim protector for a power forward. He's just not as good as that as he is defending off the ball and then defending most guys on the ball. I think he will have to step up up a little bit in terms of protecting the rim because Cody Zeller isn't the best rim protecting center. Cody Zeller struggles with that. Advanced metrics grade Larry Nance Jr. to be about a C plus rim protector for power forwards. That's a slightly above average. He's just not going to wow you in that 
area. If you want clips showcasing Larry Nance Jr. defending in a multitude of situations, Reese dropped a really good article on him over on our website. I will link that in the description below, and I'll probably post a comment at the top of the comment section with that article link. So if you want more insight on Larry Nance Jr.'s defense, go check out Reese's article. It's a really well-written piece, and it has some video in it. I can't do video breakdowns on the channel. I saw somebody comment about that on the previous player preview that I did. Uh, I'm just unable to do it. It would take a lot of time amongst editing this video and planning for this video and putting this whole video together. It would not only take a lot of time, but it's copyrighted on YouTube and I have just always stayed away from getting into potential trouble with that. So if you want video clips on Larry Nance Jr.'s defense, check out Reese's article. Now, as far as how Larry Nance Jr. can be used, he should just be used as a passer in a multitude of situations. He's a glue guy that can help the offense run better and help create good shots for his teammates. I would like to see him as a passer from the high post top of the key area, as well as a guy who can punish teams if they are aggressively trapping pick and rolls. He's a guy that can short roll and make the right decision, and he can help the offense take advantage of something like traps against Damian Lillard. I also think we'll have a lot more cutting in this year's offense, and that's something that I've wanted, especially from some of his bench teammates like an Anthony Simons and a Cyril Little. And Larry Nance Jr. is a guy that can help facilitate those cuts, facilitate some of those actions. If Nasir Little or Anthony Simons is cutting back door, Larry Nance Jr. can be a lot like Yusuf Nurkic in hitting them on those backdoor cuts. So Larry Nance Jr. is just a guy to cut off of, especially if Nance is short rolling and the defense is rotating off a guy like an Anthony Simons or a Nasir Little. Those guys can always spot up, but at times I think they'll have opportunities to cut and potentially get dunks with their athleticism. And Larry Nance Jr. reads the floor well enough to be able to hit them on those cuts. I also want him to spark our bench's transition offense, uh, just as that guy that can force some steals, force some turnovers, and get the team out and running. He can grab and go. He's a good rebounder, and he can push the pace, or he can collect one of his deflections for a steal, and he can push the pace that way. And then he can also fill the lane off those guys. So I think he will be the key piece into helping our bench unit run the floor effectively. As far as his role goes, he'll be the backup four. He'll play some backup five and then I also think he'll play in some forward combinations with Roko at the three and Nance at the four. Nance can also play some three it's just the only other four man we're going to be playing is Roko so uh, the only time Nance could be considered the three man is if he's playing next to Roko. Either one of them is the three or four in that situation it's not something that has to be set you know both those guys would be forwards in that situation next to a Yusuf Nurkic or Cody Zeller at the center spot. I think Nance will play around 28 minutes per game. I hope he plays around 20 28 minutes per game. He's uh, the best player on our bench as we head into the season. Maybe a guy like a Nasir Little or Anthony Simons takes a jump and makes it an argument. But right now, Nance is the most surefire bench piece we have. So 28 minutes per game is good. If Roko's playing 28 minutes per game as well, that would mean 20 minutes at the backup four for Nance and then eight minutes where Nance is playing next to Roko. As far as statistical goals go for Larry Nance, I don't have a points per game goal for him because he's not a guy that really does a lot of damage scoring the ball and he's just a guy who kind of takes the shots when they are there. He's not somebody that needs to create a bunch of shots for himself. So if he averages eight points per game or 10 points per game, it's not a big deal. The bigger deal is that he's able to knock down a high percentage of his shots and be able to score efficiently. Before we get to his efficiency goals, I think he should aim to average 3.5 assists per game. Now, if he's only playing 28 minutes, that might seem like a bit much, but honestly, I might be shorting him a little bit here. If he's kind of the main facilitator in the half court, which he might be, you know, he's definitely needs some help in that regard, but I feel like the Blazers could use him with the bench unit a lot like the Golden State Warriors use a Draymond Green with their starting lineup, then maybe 3.5 assists per game is actually a little low for Larry Nance Jr. I think he has a chance to average four assists per game off the bench this year. As far as rebounding goes, he should aim to average six rebounds per game, two of those on the offensive end. As far as efficiency, I want to see him continue to steadily improve his three-point percentage. As I've said, the last three years, he's improved by 1%. Last year, he shot 36%. So his goal this year from three should be to shoot 37%. As far as his percentage from two, he's a career 57.5% two-point shooter. His goal should be slightly above that to shoot 58% from inside the arc. 
I want to see him bounce back from the free throw line last year, only 61%. He's only had a couple seasons in which he shot over 70% for his career. He shoots 69%. So his goal should be to shoot in the 70s in terms of his free throw percentage. And then the final goal for him should be a 60% true shooting percentage. Last year, he only shot 56% for his career. He's right around 58%. So playing off the bench uh, against weaker defensive lineups with some talented bench pieces, in my opinion, he should be able to kind of pick and choose his spots a little bit more than he had to in Cleveland and therefore I think he can be a more efficient player than he was last season anyway that wraps up Larry Nance Jr's player preview let me know what your thoughts are on him down in the comment section below this is a guy that I'm super excited to watch the first preseason game tips off tonight so I'll definitely be looking for how Larry Nance Jr is utilized by Chauncey Billups and just how the offense works in general because this is brand new for for all players on the roster we got a brand new coach i'm excited just to see how everything functions if you want to catch up on some previous player previews there will be a playlist link down in the description box below and with that that's a wrap for this video i'll catch you in the next one have a good rest of your day as always peace out go blazers